Senator Tim Kaine joins us here on the set with perspective on the legislative side. Well, good to see you, Senator. Great Thanks to be, for being here. Great to be back. Thanks. Let's start with the Affordable Care Act because we had the deadline last night at midnight. We had a, a big rush at the last minute as people yeah, were trying to get expected. signed up. Yeah. Uh, from your perspective, and, and obviously we know where you stood on this yeah. coming in, um, do you feel like at least the sign-up objectives were met at this point? I do. I do. Look, the, rock out, the rollout was very rocky, and there have been bumps along the way. I supported the Affordable Care Act when it was passed and still do. I want to be part of the crew to find fixes, and I've been recommending to the White House and legislatively improvements we can make. But 7 million enrolled is, a, is very positive. And if you add young people who can now stay on family policies till age 26, and the folks who have Medicaid in the states that have embraced the Medicaid expansion, you're probably up to 10 million or more Americans who have health insurance because of the Affordable Care Act. You That's mentioned a good thing. the Rocky Rollout, and you mentioned that there might be fixes needed. What can be done now to improve it? Um, there's a, there was a group of senators last week, and I'm part of this group, who rolled out a number of things that we think we can do for improvements. So, for example, one of the bills I've signed on is a bill to create a copper plan. There's kind of, you know, bronze, silver, gold copper plan, which would be a little bit more of an affordable plan uh, for folks who are finding the costs too high. So there's things like that that we can do. There's other uh, adjustments and fixes. But again, the, the sheer number of people who have uh, health insurance as a result of the ACA is a positive sign. And then some of the protections, m my family's already benefited from one piece, the protection against being turned down because of pre-existing conditions. Mm. Millions of Americans have been affected by that in the past. That's no longer a valid reason that an insurance company can use to deny any of your family members coverage. Right. As the Senate uh, rolls on, you know, there are no shortage of issues that you're talking about. We, next got, week. It. we got issues. You got, yeah. <laughs> you got issues. Your issues are our, our issues, so yeah, that's a good indeed. thing. Um, we're talking about raising the minimum wage. This yeah. is something that we've already seen in, um, in some states and Many local states. jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. This is a big issue to tackle. What are the pros and cons, and where do you, where do you fall on this? So issue? I'm going to vote for the minimum wage increase. The minimum wage has dramatically eroded in purchasing power because inflation since 1968. It's eroded, you know, more than 35 percent. And, and right now, if you're working minimum wage, uh, you will be under the poverty level as a full-time worker if you have a dependent or two in most jurisdictions. This proposal in three steps would increase the minimum wage to $10.10 and then index it for inflation going forward so that we don't wait around for six or seven years before acting. Um, and I think it's positive. The economic studies uh, that have been done about these minimum wage increases generally rebut the notion that it hurts jobs. And because the recession that we're coming out of was a was a because of a drop in consumer demand, if you can take low wage workers and give them an increase, they tend to spend those dollars. It creates consumer demand, and I think it will be positive for the economy. You might be able to rebut the notion that, uh, as far as the jobs, but you also have to deal with your colleagues who are more conservative. How do you get that fight through now? And is it is it really a way to at least draw viewers or, or draw voters to the polls in November? Well, it certainly is a clarifying issue for folks, but but we're not giving up on the fact that look, we think there's a lot of Republican support for this. There certainly is among the Republicans. An electorate. This is not an issue. There may be division on Capitol Hill and elected reps, but if you look at polling, Democrat, Republican, Independent, any region of the country, this is overwhelmingly popular. I think we will have enough votes to get this passed in the Senate in a bipartisan way. It's going to be close, but I think we will. The question will be when it goes over to the House. Uh, but if we can, the, passing something in the Senate with bipartisan support is kind of a precondition to getting it passed in the House. There's no guarantee, but if we do get something passed bipartisan, that tends to make it a little bit easier there, and this will be a good one to work on. A lot of folks, though, are currently unemployed and looking still for that safety net until the next job comes along. You're also talking about um, helping those people. Yeah, the, the uh, unemployment, unemployment insurance. insurance. You know, we had a, a deal on the extension of UI benefits that, ext that expired at year end, uh, uh, year end 2013, and we've been looking for some kind of a, a carry forward, at least for the time being. And it looks like we found that deal in the Senate. Uh, about 10 days ago, a deal was reached that we believe will get bipartisan support to pass. It will be another one of those matters that, you know, we, we think will pass and then hopefully go to the House and say, look, Democrats and Republicans have agreed. It's a good thing for people, good thing for the economy. Please join us. Well, Senator, we wish you the best of luck, and I know that they, there have been signs recently that everybody can work together on the Hill, so I know there has been some we, agreement. We passed a, 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 a bill for uh, pediatric cancer research, bipartisan, and the President's doing a bill signing uh, with us Thursday, and it was named after a young Virginian, Gabriella Miller. She and her family sure. inspired the passage of the bill. Right. So there are things that we can do together. Let's take that momentum and run with it. Absolutely.